And what we're going to do is change out the circuitry and the capsule. And we're going to change it out for an RK47 style capsule that's uh, dual sided. So we can have omnidirectional. And we are going to replace it with microphoneparts.com, their whole PCB kit. So it comes with a brand new PCB board and all the uh, components to go on there. I turned this into a really good sounding mic. Okay, right now we are going to unpackage the microphone parts PCB kit. And what it comes with here is a brand new printed board. Makes it a lot easier and cleaner than the stock crappy board. Comes with uh, two resistors that are optimized with the JFET. So each kit is going to sound really good. And it comes with a bag of all the components to install. Alright, uh, I got my PCB board into my helping hands. As you can see, everything is clearly labeled. And the instructions are a step-by-step -step. Tells you all the values. It has a picture for you to reference to make sure you're installing correctly. And uh, for my second helping hand, what I did was remove the other magnifying glass so I could read the part or the numbers on each component. Alright, so the first step is to install the fixed resistors. And um, it says to place the 56.2 ohm resistor into slots R1 and R2. I've already placed one into the R2. But let me just show you what I do real quick. Uh, it's, I read right on the component itself. And it down. It says 56.2. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but use a magnifying glass. Or if you don't have a magnifying glass, I use my cell phone camera to take a really high contrast picture. And then I could blow it up and then read it. But this is 56.2. And that's going into R1 and R2. Take a pair of needle nose pliers. And then bend down those leads. Like so. And then set the camera to focus. And so it's R1. I'm going to place the component through the holes. Push it down, just like so. Now, one thing that helps, I read on the internet, is to start soldering the very first leg. So, what I use here is a pair of clamps. Got these at Cheapo at Harbor Freight. I push the resistor all the way up, then I clamp one of the legs down. And that will hold it in place while I place a bead of solder on that other leg. Got my clamps here holding the leads in. And to the tip here. Now I can remove my clamps. Alright, I got a few more leads uh, soldered in there. And what you want to do now is just use a pair of wire cutters to step down those leads a little later and trim them down more I always leave a little extra just in case I need to come back and reflow the solder through some of these joints all right, I just finished uh, installing the resistors. So their instructions are very good. So you can take a look at 
the board you just made and compare it with what they have here. Looks like I forgot to do the R12 and uh, R13 and R14s. Uh, we'll skip the step there. So what's really nice about having their picture to verify with, got the two up there, one, two, R13, R14 missing, then one, two, three down here. All right, that looks good. So now I just got to put in a, the R13s and R14 resistors. And those are the ones that come in that little baggie with the JFET. Come to page eight. And that is the installation of this little switch. What it says to do is carefully bend up these two posts, which are post uh, pins four and six. We bend those up. They say to trim them, but I trim it later. It just makes it easier when you have to um, solder the capsule wire in R9 to that post. So just bend them straight up with the pair of bend them straight up with the pair of needle nose pliers, and this will go into this area here. As you can see, it says Omni cardoid it goes through here again for this I use my clamps to hold it in place when I make the first solder clamps try to get it really flush to the board. There we go. Get one of those leads in there. You can take this off and then just double check to make sure it's nice and flush. Yep. Now you can finish soldering off the rest of those leads. So now we are on to the capacitors. The step here. Again, it's the instructions are very clear, just like the uh, resistors. I think that's what they're called. Yep, just like the resistors. Gives you a nice picture and it gives you all the um, placements for them and the markings on each capacitor. Now what I'm going to do here, I don't know if it's a good way to do this, this proper technique, but I'm just going to put a little solder joint on one leg of these capacitors so when I turn it over to reflow the solder, it's not going to fall out on me. So just something really small, just like that. So now, there we go. And they're still in place. So now I can reflow the solder joints on those capacitors much easier than using the clamping method. For these uh, box capacitors right here, I'm going to use my clamping method. Use the clamps here to hold the leads on the other side to get a nice flush um, mount or a nice flush mounting point for this capacitor. All right, now we are on to capacitors C14 and C15. And these are like EQ mods for this. Uh, this page is important. But for this capsule, it's an RK47 style capsule. And for that, for a nice linear circuit, just a nice flat response, we are gonna use both the uh, 470 on both C14 and C15. So these are going to go into C14 and C15. All the capacitors installed. 
See, this is nice to have the picture to reference. Uh, so I forgot to count the blue ones. So the blues and the reds and these yellows. And I'm looking good. We have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13. Just like in the main. So we're good to go to move on to the next step. The next step is to install the inductors. Uh, it says these parts are not polarized, so orient either orientation is correct, but they are color coded. So for L1, L1, which is right here, we have brown, gray, brown, silver. And that's what we have here. We have, we have a brown, gray, brown, and then a silver. So that one goes into L1. And that's just for L2, we have a blue, gray, black, silver. And blue, gray, brownish, I guess, silver. And that will go into L2, which is right here. All right, the next step here is to install these diodes. These are extremely tiny and hard to read. Sometimes you get lucky with the magnifying glass, your eyes are just too tired. Sometimes I'll take my cell phone and take a, take a picture of it, a real high contrast picture. I'll show you here real quick. That could be a 4 and an 8. And yeah, there's a diode here that's 1N. 4148 and those go into um, positions D4 and D5. So for example, here's D4, D5, get these diodes. If you look on the board here, you have a little stripe on that end and a stripe over there. So you want to make sure that when you put these diodes on the PCB on the PCB that the black stripes match up with the stripes on the board. Alright, we just installed the diodes, made sure the black stripe is facing the right orientation on the board, and now we are on to the electrolytic capacitors and the trim pot. If you look at the capacitors, there's a long leg and a short leg. The long leg is the positive. If you look on the PCB, there's a positive sign here, and you want to make sure the longer of the two legs goes through that hole. Alright, let's see what the uh, value is for this. Alright, this is a 330. And 330 is going to C6 and C7. So here's C7. And the longer leg is going through the positive hole on the PCB board. Alright, the last capacitor is 100 and that goes into C5. Just like so. And then we have the trim pot. So it's pretty self-explanatory. I just make sure the screw is facing outwards so that you could adjust it with a flathead screwdriver. All right, now we just installed the capacitors and the trim pot here. We are now on to our transistors. So this is A1084, and this goes in T1 and T2. So if you look at the board, the uh, you see the rounded edge and the flat edge. You want to make sure the transistor is going just like the PCB board says, round edge and flat edge. That is also 
A108. That goes into T2. There we go, that was a little easier. Goes right down here. Just like that. Right now what we have left to do is install the JFET and the 1G resistor onto R9, which is right here, and then JFET goes here. But when you do the JFET, you take the third leg and we're going to uh, solder it to this post as well as the other leg of R9 is also going to be soldered to this post up in the air. Uh, place that in. And I'm going to have it rest right up on the post of the switch. Now we also do the same with the R9 resistor. I'm going to put that right there on the board and I'm going to bend the resistor right to the leg. I don't know if you can see it really well, but what we have right here is the R9 resistor, the switch, and the JFET leg all wrapped around the switch leg here. What I'll do now is do a nice solder joint and then clean it with some isopropyl alcohol. Okay, that pretty much does it for soldering all the components to the board. So as you can see here, my little joint, I got a nice bead of solder. I also tinned this other leg here of the switch so we can put the capsule wire to that a little, a little more easily. Alright, that pretty much does it for um, putting all the components on this PCB. And uh, the next step is to trim off all those leads, uh, it's pretty ugly. And then clean it with some 99% isopropyl alcohol. Got this on Amazon. I'm going to use an old toothbrush for that. And I'm going to trim down all of these leads. Um, if I see any soldering joints that need to be reflowed. I'll do that now. And then I'll show you the clean project after this. Okay, uh, I just trimmed all my leads down to my liking. And now it's time to clean all the flux off of this board. I'm gonna give the back of this board a nice scrubbing. See, it's looking nice and clean, removing all the flux, and it really shines up the uh, solder joints as well. Make sure you get good continuity on those. And we'll just let that dry for a bit. And then I'm going to use a small paintbrush. A small paintbrush to clean off my solder joint here. Just to remove all the flux or any oils. And now we are ready to disassemble the MXL 990 and install the wires from the XLR into this part of the PCB, install the capsule wires and the back plate wire here, marked as BB for back plate. And then we'll close it up and give it a test. There we have it, we got the uh, wires all soldered up into the board. It's a little tight fit, so you have to be very patient using helping hands, whatever you can to help hold the board and the wires where they need to be. And then running the capsule wires, you can see that, through the PCB board to get to the switch. 
So this is the first one I'm actually mounted upside down. The other ones I mounted right side up. And this was a little more difficult. But nonetheless, still very nice. So now we're going to put the mic together. Actually, first we have to do the voltmeter test. And I'll show you that next. All right, now there's one more step to check to make sure the continuity of all the circuits is working. And that's to take your multimeter here and take a ground and place it on a nice solid ground. Make sure it's not touching anything else on the chassis here. So I'm going to place it right up here on the leg like so. And then we want to connect the mic to a good um, phantom power source. Make sure everything's turned down so it doesn't didn't make any feedback. Then we turn on our phantom power. All right. Now we want to touch the leg of D5. Make sure you don't touch anything else so you, you don't ground two circuits and cause a short. So in the instructions, one last step and that's to hook this up to a good power supply, a good phantom power and I'm connected into my Scarlet right into the mic and I have for my multimeter, um, an alligator clipped right to the chassis of the microphone body. And then what it says here to do is to touch the positive to the striped end of D5. So if we look here, we got D5. The striped end is going to be the second lead. So now I'm going to carefully go in and touch the D5 lead and try not to touch anything else and then get the reading. So I am at 59.8, which is a very good reading. Um, it says in the manual, uh, the meter will show the circuit's voltage output to the capsule. If it is below 50 volts DC, your oscillator circuit is broken. So this time, <laughs> three times in a row, I'm having good results. Just by taking your time, making sure everything looks good, make sure you clean all your solder joints, and you'll get those readings. Um, it says you can adjust this knob here clockwise to help um, raise that number. So it also says they recommend a maximum polarization voltage of 62 volts. So I think 59 is a good... I'm happy with that. I'll, I'll stay with 59. It's harder with the board upside down on here. The 59.8, I'm happy with those. So now I'll put it together and give the mic a test. I said I think that we can stay here Cause I feel our time has come And we can walk down to the ocean And sit with the rising sun so unpack your bags this instant No more running from town to town And now that we've arrived so safely Baby, you can lay me down Lay me down Lay me down Lay me down I said I think that we can stay here Cause I feel our time has come And we can walk down to the ocean And sit with the rising sun So unpack your bags this instant No more running from town to town And now that we've arrived so safely Baby you can lay me down Lay me down Lay me down Lay me down I 
I said I think that we can stay here Cause I feel our time has come And we can walk down to the ocean And sit with the rising sun So unpack your bags this instant No more running from town to town And now that we've arrived so safely Baby you can lay me down Lay me down Lay me down Lay me down